Thanks, guys. Tim, alcoholic. Okay, so um, just a little, uh, first of all, we're on page 72. Tonight we're going to work on um, steps 5, 6, and 7. <clears throat> Up on the uh, table here, we do have from last week uh, remaining fourth step sheets. So there is a resentment sheet, a fear sheet, and a sex conduct and all other harms sheet. So uh, feel free to uh, partake. And uh, with that, we'll get going. Uh, but I'd first like to start out with a, a set-aside prayer. Again, commonly used in this sort of workshop sort of format. So um, <clears throat> let's take about 30 seconds just to um, quiet our minds and wrap ourselves around what we're going to talk about tonight. And, uh, and then we'll say a version of a set-aside prayer. So just a moment of silence, please. <clears throat> God, please set aside everything I think I know about myself, the 12 steps, this book, the meetings, my disease, and you, God, so I may have an open mind and a new experience with all these things. Please let me see the truth. Amen. Okay, as I said, page 72, into action, chapter 6. Having made our personal inventory, so what are we referring to here? Fourth step sheets, right? Having made our personal inventory, what shall we do about it? We have been trying to get a new attitude, a new relationship with our Creator, and to discover the obstacles in our path. So the obstacles in our path are resentments, fears, harms, and sex conduct that are remaining undisclosed unanalyzed. Uh, we have admitted certain defects. We have ascertained in a rough way what the trouble is. What does the big book tell us is the root of our trouble? Selfishness, self-centeredness. Uh, you could also say self-centered fear. I think that's also a legitimate um, rough way of describing um, our, um, our problem. We have put our finger on the weak items in our personal inventory. Now these are about to be cast out. This requires action on our part, which, when completed, will mean that we have admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our defects. I do think after we got through a uh, talking in step five, uh, as we're going to discuss a in a little bit, if you come up with the fact that you've been selfish, self-centered, would answer that sentence exactly. What is the exact nature of our defects? If you're a thief, is your exact nature of your defect the fact that you're a thief? No. No. You're selfish, self-centered. This brings us to the fifth step in the program of recovery mentioned in the preceding chapter. This is perhaps difficult, especially discussing our defects with, other, with another person. We think we have done well enough in admitting these things to ourselves. There is doubt about that. In actual practice, we usually find a solitary self-appraisal. Remember, anytime you see self-something, bad. <clears throat> solitary self-appraisal insufficient. Many of us thought it necessary to go much further. We will be more reconciled to discussing ourselves with another person when we see good reasons, plural, why we should do so. The best reason first. If we skip this vital step, 
we may not overcome drinking. I think you could end the conversation right there. The fact of the matter is, is the reason we're doing these things superficially, initially, is to stop drinking. The reason we're really doing it later on is to change our whole life, <laughs> right? But the fact that this could maybe uh, ruin us from not drinking ever again is reason enough. Time after time, newcomers have tried to keep to themselves certain facts about their lives, meaning keeping secrets, right? Trying to avoid this humbling experience, they have turned to easier methods, meaning not bringing it up, uh, understating it. Uh, those would be two good examples. So what is the purpose of the fifth step? Is to actually meet it head on and humble ourselves to it. Deflation of ego. You could, you could, you know, own seven companies and, and be the big shot in the community. But the fact of the matter is, unless you surrender to the process, humble ourselves to the process, you have the potential of drinking again. Almost invariably, they got drunk. Having persevered with the rest of the program, they wondered why they fell. We think the reason is that they never completed their house cleaning. They took inventory all right, but they hung on to some of the worst items in stock. That would be a great example, I think, of doing a resentment sheet. And when you're done with it, still have the resentment just as badly as before you started. The idea of the resentment sheet is to get all the way through to the fifth column and find out what your responsibility is, what your part in it is, so that it relieves your blame of the other person, so that you can unblock and move on and not have this person, place, or institution rent space in our heads. Because if they are, it's blocking me from doing good maximum 12-step work. They took, uh, I said that, they only thought, in italicized, that they had lost their egoism and fear. They only thought they had humbled themselves, but they had not learned enough of humility, fearlessness, and honesty in the sense we find it necessary until they told someone else all their life story. So assets are hum humility, fearlessness, and honesty. That is the point of the fifth step, right? It's not confession that I say it and then somehow it goes away. I say it, I see my part in it, and it starts the process of diminishing uh, the fear, the resentment, refeeling, Latin for refeeling, uh, to stop the conduct, to, make, to, to be prepared to have the willingness to make the amends for the money I took. Right? It's to unblock all the shenanigans. More than most people, the alcoholic leads a double life. He is very much the actor. To the outer world, he presents his stage character. This is the one he likes his fellows to see. He wants to enjoy a certain reputation, but knows in his heart he doesn't deserve it. So we could feel as though we don't deserve it, because we're in here. We haven't gotten through the process. And I think George, who's not here tonight, made an excellent point uh, last week that this is not therapy. This is not the purpose of saying something to feel better about it. That would be really fall short. The idea is to say something about it, see our part in it, feel better about it, to do that. It's only about doing that. And the fact of the matter is, is the more the person is caught up in their ego, their false self, their reputation, their position, the less likely they are to humble themselves to the process. So the more uh, fearless we are about it and the more honest we are about it, the more humility we express in doing it, the more likely we'll get the best result. The inconsistency is made worse by the things he does on his sprees, meaning while drinking. Coming to his senses, he is revolted at certain episodes he vaguely remembers. These memories are a nightmare. 
He trembles to think someone might have observed him. As fast as he can, he pushes these memories far inside himself. He hopes they will never see the light of day. He is un under constant fear and tension. That makes for more drinking. So what's a little phrase that we use all the time? We're only as sick as our secrets. Does that mean that we have to put our hand up in the middle of a, of a meeting and, 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 and regurgitate a lot of stuff? Absolutely not. In fact, it's, it's not the venue. Psychologists are inclined to agree with us. We have spent thousands of dollars for examinations. We know but few instances where they have given, where we have given these doctors a fair break. We have seldom told them the whole truth nor have we followed their advice. Unwilling to be honest with these sympathetic men, we were honest with no one else. Small wonder many in the medical profession have a low opinion of alcoholics and their chance for recovery. What was Silkworth's stat for recovery? The top guy in the country. What was his stat? 2% success rate. 2%, a guy who specialized in it. We must be entirely honest with somebody if we expect to live along or, or happily in this world. Rightly and naturally, we think well before we choose the person or persons. So what does that tell us? I think that opens up a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, latitude here. We can have somebody that we give 93% of our uh, fifth step to, and we have to go to a separate person for the remaining 7%. I think it means that we could sit in front of our sponsor and his sponsor. I think it means that we can uh, do um, a fourth step, more, a fifth step more than once, two different people. I think it, it's all of those things. I don't know where I dropped off there. Uh, with whom to take this intimate and confidential step. Those of us belonging to a religious denomination which requires confession must, and of course will want to go to the properly appointed authority, whose duty it is to receive it. Though we have no religious connection, we may st still do well to talk with someone ordained by an established religion. We often find such a person quick to see and understand our problem. Of course, we sometimes encounter people who do not understand alcoholics. If we cannot or would rather not do this, we search for our acquaintance for a closed-mouthed, understanding friend, which of course would include sponsors, right? In the first 164 pages, the word sponsor is not used, right? But this would include that, right? Perhaps our doctor or psychologist will be the person. It may be one of our own family, but we cannot disclose anything to our wives or our parents which will hurt them and make them unhappy. We have no right to save our own skin at another person's expense. Such parts of our story we tell to someone who will understand, yet be unaffected. So this is a good place to break for a second because it's, it's only four and a half pages tonight. So we can spend a little time here and I think it's important. So I know it's rare, but I'm going to use it because it's extreme, just because I want you to start to think about this. If you've committed a very serious crime and it's not come to light yet, Somebody's still looking for the perpetrator, and you're the perpetrator, right? Would you tell your sponsor that? No. It just told us why you can't do that. Because there's potential you're going to tell that person, that sponsor something, and that person is not protected legally. If the detective comes to them and says, do you know anything about such and such, they would be lying when they said, no, I don't know anything about it. They could be called to the stand to be dis deposed or whatever the hell they do. 
<laughs> I, I'm almost acting like I, that's never happened to me before. Right? <laughs> like like, like, I, like I'm, I'm virgin. I'm, I'm a virgin of, of the loss. Of, uh, yeah. So, um, so, so I, I use that extreme example to just to be conscious of that that particular, remember I used the, the, the stack before, maybe you tell somebody 93%, maybe the other 7% goes to somebody who's more protected. See it? Um, and that definitely would mean that you wouldn't raise your hand in a meeting and say something, you know, generic, you know, you're putting everybody at, at harm there, in jeopardy. Um, you know, I say to people like as a acting like a big shot or something, oh, they couldn't pull that out of me. They, they could. If you pull my nails out, I'll never divulge it. Well, that may be true. But the fact of the matter is that's not what's being said here. It says that that person shouldn't have told me that. And I did meet somebody recently. Uh, he's currently doing the uh, uh, St. Aidan's uh, Solution Group meeting. Uh, he's the first person that brought this to my attention, that um, he actually before the uh, fifth step starts. He actually tells them that if there's some big, he'll, he'll use, I think he uses the word felony that you have not, you know, you haven't paid your dues on yet and they're still looking for you. you, know, you you're going to have to deal with this. You're going to have to deal with it in step nine at some point, but let's not jump ahead of things. Do not tell me. I want you to go to X, Y, or Z, right? Because they're protected for that sort of stuff. And uh, so we're good there. And if you're not, when we go to show of hands, uh, please, please bring that up because I think it's important. Uh, the rule is we must be hard on ourselves, but always considerate of others. There's yet another sentence about that. Right? Uh, another great example of this would be um, uh, uh, Bill goes to Dr. Bob in uh, 1935. The first person they go to work on is Eddie Riley. I, uh, that was a setup. I thought you were going to do Bill Dotson. First person they go to work on, Eddie Riley. And Eddie Riley's living in Dr. Bob's house. And uh, he's a little... Doo -doo. And um, uh, Eddie Riley's wife is in the house also. And uh, a spiritual thing has happened to the both of them. They're getting on bo board with this, you know, it's, it's sort of the Oxford group thing at that point. And um, Eddie's wife thinks it's very, you know, now's the time. I should tell Eddie about my affair. And like the whole thing went, you know, right down the tubes. So uh, that's another good example, non-criminal, but a, yet another example. He was not the person to hear that. Maybe Ann Smith was the person to hear that. And then for them to decide how that was gonna be dealt with in the future. You would not tell somebody where it could hurt them, particularly somebody who's like nine days sober, right? <laughs> it's wrong. So, okay. Notwithstanding the great necessity for discussing ourselves with someone, it may be one, it may be one is so situated that there is no suitable person available. If that is so, this step may be postponed only, however, if we hold ourselves in complete readiness. I think that means willingness, right? The same word to go through with it at the first opportunity. We say this because we are very anxious that we talk to the right person. So now there's three requirements of the person who this person we're going to tell to. Here's the three requirements. It is important that he be able to keep a confidence. That's important. That he fully understand and approve what we are driving at. It's important. And thirdly, that he will not try to change our plan. A meaning this, this spiritual process we're going through. Not somebody that has a completely different concept. They, they, they believe that you should do this another way. We don't want that person. But we must not use this as a mere excuse to postpone. When we decide who is to hear our story, we waste no time. We have written inventory and we are prepared for a long talk. We explain to our partner what we are about to do and why we have to do it. He should realize that we are engaged upon a life and death errand. Most people approached in this way will be glad to help. They will be honored by our confidence. So now here's some instructions. We pocket our pride and go to it. 
illuminating every twist of character, every dark cranny of the past. Once we have taken this step, withholding nothing, we are delighted. We can look the world in the eye, meaning we're unblocked, right? We can go, we can be alone at perfect peace and ease. Here's the fifth step promises, fifth step promises. Our fears fall away from us. We begin to feel the nearness of our Creator. We may have had certain spiritual beliefs, but now we begin to have a spiritual experience. Remember the, the, the little scenario I've done in the past? That one, two, and three is belief, is faith. Action four through 12 creates awareness and experience. These are all verbs. It's in action that the big guns happen. Up top is all philosophical. Yeah, yeah, I have faith. Yeah, yeah, I believe, I believe, I believe. Somebody says, I trust, I depend upon a higher power. You got to give me five examples. They're, they're actual things you have to point to. It's not a conversation. It's not a college class. Proof. The feeling that the drink problem has disappeared will often come strongly. We feel we are on the broad highway, capital B, capital H, right? That's a spiritual concept. We are on a spiritual quest, walking hand in hand with the spirit of the universe. Same as saying God, same as saying higher power, right? Returning home, we find a place. So we've done our fifth step. Done. We're finished, right? Returning home, we find a place where we, be, where we can be quiet for an hour, carefully reviewing what we have done. That's meditating. Those two sentences, that's, uh, that, excuse me, that one sentence is meditating. We then, we thank God from the bottom of our heart that we know him better. That's a prayer. So we just meditated in prayer during this one hour after taking the fifth step. Taking this book down from our shelf, we turn to the page which contains the 12 steps. Page 59, 60, right? 12 steps are listed right there. Carefully reading the first five proposals, which is the same as saying the first five steps, right? Carefully reading the first five proposals, we ask if we've admitted anything. For we are building an arch through which we shall walk a free man at last. So Bill's going to use all construction metaphor now, right? Is our work solid so far? You ask yourself this, and then you meditate on it. You intuitively see if you get some sort of feeling or thought about it. Are the stones properly in place? Meditate on that for a minute. Have we skimped on the cement put into the foundation? Have we tried to make mortar without sand? So that's a checklist after we've come home and sat and meditated, prayed, and during the hour, we go through this checklist all by ourselves. All these questions we'd want to do. Right? <clears throat> Page 76. <clears throat> if we can answer to our satisfaction... Then we look at step six. So in other words, we wrote out four. We met with this person, did five. Let's pretend it took two hours. We sat for an hour. We did our checklist. We're already doing six now. So we're going to go five, six, and seven like that. All at the same time. And why I think it's also important to do it that way is I think we'd lose momentum if we, okay, well, I'll meet you, you know, in three days and we'll do six and seven. What? I even forgot what I said. I, all in one. Create the experience, right? It, it, you, you'd be more likely to get some sort of um, palpable uh, a feeling. <laughs> We have emphasized willingness as being indispensable, meaning mandatory. If somebody's looking for a must, there's a must, right? Willingness is a must. So when we're looking for step six, here it is. Are we now ready to let God remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable? Can he now have, can he now take them all, every one? So those would be the questions. We're going to do it together as a group. But 
there's step six. And if the person's like a little wishy-washy when, when you ask the question, we get instructions and it says, if we still cling to something we will not let go, we ask God to help us be willing. Notice it does not say, <clears throat> if we still cling to something we cannot let go. It says, will not. In other words, we've made a choice. You have a choice to let it go. It, it's a decision. If you're still holding it, you've made a decision to continue to hold it. If you've made a decision to turn it over to your higher power, then that you did it. All right, so that would be step six. When ready, we say something like this. So we go right from six into seven. Here is the seventh step prayer. I'll read it first and then I'll stand. We'll do it all together. But my creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. We have then completed step seven. So you see how it all goes together. So we're going to do six and seven together. Even if you've not written out your fourth and you, you've written out your fourth and you have not done five, don't worry about it. You can do these things a billion times. It's fine. What I just want you to feel is, though, that you can find it in the book very readily for when you take somebody to it, A, and B, it's just fluid off of your tongue. So step six, I'm going to ask everybody these two questions. You're all going to say yes. I didn't say it. Good, 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 good. I sort of wanted to set it up a little bit. Are you now ready to let God remove from you all the things which you have admitted are objectionable? Yes. Can he now take them all, every one? Yes. That would be just changing these questions into sponsor to sponsee. If you did these at home, the big book is actually giving us the instructions. You could do this at home on your own. It, it made that point very clearly. But, you know, if I'm with a guy and we, I, I love doing a, a fifth step on a retreat because we're sort of separated from everything and, you know, we go into some sort of quiet space. Five, six, seven, boom, fell swoop. <clears throat> Speaking of seven. So we'll read the uh, prayer right out of the book. We'll read it out loud together. My creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. So uh, we just, that's how you take steps six and seven. It's not much more complex than that. And um, uh, the, the big book is also clear that you could do that on your own also. Uh, in your hour at home, it's telling you, you could have done that by yourself, but uh, we didn't. Okay, that's where we're going to stop tonight. Thanks so much.